you tuned in. On our panelists tonight, we have some amazing guests. We don't want you to miss this tonight. It's going to be a phenomenal night as we have uh, Roseanne Baker Thornley and Rochelle Luke, and they're going to be doing some, I'm just making fun of her name. She's awesome. <laughs> and uh, we're just, uh, just having a great time tonight. We're going to be talking about songwriting. So stay tuned. Buckle in. Buckle in. This is going to be great. These ladies have a very, very unique ability. They don't just, they don't just write songs. They have a method to how they write their songs. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask both of you, um, or whichever one wants to answer first, how did you arrive, how did you start in songwriting? Um, what, like, what was the very beginning of songwriting for you? Um, Rosanna, um, <laughs> For me, it was actually, so I've always been I've always been playing music. I started playing piano when I was three and I, you know, grew up singing at church, but I never thought that I could create music. Like I thought that you had to be some sort of anointed magical person to do that. And I just didn't, what well, didn't have permission to do that. Uh, and I remember one time I was in high school and this friend of mine at school, she had heard about a radio station that had a songwriting contest. And so she had written a bunch of words and, but she didn't know how to play an instrument or anything. So she was like, Rochelle, you play guitar and piano, make some chords and let's write a song together. And I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. Like I didn't say out loud, like we're not allowed. <laughs> but, um, but I did because she was just like, yeah, anyone can do this. Let's do it. So, so yeah, so I just kind of went into that. And then once I realized that I was allowed to do that, it was like, wow, this whole world opened up where you can just take notes and words and chords and make whatever you want. So once I started, I just I couldn't stop writing. That's awesome. <laughs> that is. Okay. How about you, Roseanne? Well, you know what? I started very early writing. And I, I was probably, and it's funny, when I was young, like I was eight, um, uh, you know how people think, what am I going to be when I grow up? What am I going to be? And I remember thinking when I was eight, it wasn't what I was going to be when I grew up. I just knew what I was. And I knew that I was a writer. And I started writing songs when I was eight. And I mean, I can still remember the first song, but um, so that's where I really started writing when I was probably eight. Um, as a bit of time went on and I was in different choirs, I joined choirs just, or I joined a few churches just to be in choirs. I think I was a member of three churches at one point in time, just so I could be in the choirs. Cause I love, love choirs. That's really a lot of my background. And it's very, it's very evident in a lot of my writing too, because harmonies, I just love harmonies. So when I was growing up then, I was a teenager, um, and I would have moved, I was living in Europe with my, my, my father in Paris, and when I was 14, I guess, was really when it kicked in, though, because then I got a guitar, I was playing guitar, and I auditioned for French radio to be part of the, uh, part of their, part of their cast, they had a cast, that they performed every week, and um, I still remember that first audition, because I was so nervous that I remember they were sitting above in behind glass and I was down in the studio and I, here I was with my guitar playing this very simple song I'd written and they actually said that I should probably sit down because I was shaking so bad and it's true. Intimidating though, yeah, yeah. Nervous, I was so nervous but I made it through and uh, became part of their, part of the cast and that's when I started, really started playing when I was about 14 and did a lot of folk music and then slowly evolved into um, bands. When I moved back to Canada I started being, I was in a band, basically a rock band, and I was writing with the guitar player. I was writing a lot of the music with him and writing a lot of it still on my own. I was, I've always been writing. I have, I am words written on, it's tattooed on my hand. So it's, just, it's, and whether I'm writing songs or I'm writing whatever, I, I'm always seem to be writing. So that's really where it started for me with writing. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now you, you both have, um, a background in, in uh, performing in uh, both Christian and secular. So that must be interesting for when it comes to your writing, uh, as far as do you have a mindset uh, when you sit down pen to paper, or is it more like um, when you're inspired or is it both? And, 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 and you're thinking about your audience or, or is it, what, what is it like? Michelle, I'm going to let you go because mine's going to be a little complicated. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many ways to answer that question. Yeah. Um, I would say that 
Um, ideas kind of come from everywhere. You're kind of constantly collecting them. I have like, you know, just a, a note on my phone where I'm always throwing in like words and phrases or sometimes a whole verse will just happen. Um, so you're kind of always collecting these things. And then when you're lucky enough to get time to really just sit and write, then I might, you know, go and find one of those that kind of draws me to it. Um, a lot of my ideas for songs actually just come from my journaling. I, I have to write like what you were saying, Roseanne, for me too. Like before that first songwriting experience that I had as a kid, I was just like always writing in notebooks, like always thinking of stories and ideas and words. I've just always loved words. Um, so a lot of my songs come from my journal where I'll just, you know, write everything down, all the things I'm feeling and thinking and that are going on in my life. And kind of by the end of it, it, it turns from like real sentences into just kind of prose or poetry. And sometimes by the end of that, like the last, you know, line of it might even come to me with kind of a melody or a musical feeling around it. Um, and then I just kind of take that and, and work on a song from there. Um, but yeah, I think there are times when, I, um, when I'm not especially inspired and I don't have a burning idea where I do just sit down and say to myself, today I'm going to write a corporate worship song that's up-tempo because that challenges me. I don't naturally write up-tempo songs unless I tell myself, we are going to write an up-tempo song. Um, so sometimes I do give myself assignments like that too to kind of push myself out of what I might naturally do. Mm, very cool. Ciao. In your, when you're writing stuff down, do you have a tendency to write down more lyric? Like I know everybody keeps stuff in their phone, right? It's the place to yeah. log up and, and, and napkins or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you write more lyric or are you more melody driven? Like what do you log mostly in your phone? If you were in your phone right now, what's there? Is it lyric? It's, um, it's almost all lyrics. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I was going to say, because I'm of two worlds right now, like I, I write, you know, I'm not, okay, so I'm going to get into my background a little bit. Now, my background was that, yes, I was performing. I've done a lot of shows. I have an album. Um, I stepped out of the business for a while. And when I was in the business, I was always asked if I'd write for other people. And of course, my answer always was no. I write for me. I don't write for anybody else. I mean, come on. But I was asked constantly. And I never did because I really was just fo I was focused on me. <laughs> so then when I stepped out when, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided to step out of the business for a little while and step back, not out, but I shelved my album. So that was a big thing. Probably not a very happy call to my manager, but whatever. Um, so I stepped back and decided that I was going to focus on just sort of being a mom and being home. So then during that period of time, I had seen some, uh, another group out of LA and they were primarily, they were writers and uh, two writers and a producer. <clears throat> and what they did was they would, they wrote, uh, they're called Matrix and they wrote Avril Lavigne's album with her. Her first, remember the first album Skater, with Skater Boy and all that? <laughs> Killer album, right? Yeah. Anyway, I remember watching them going, this is interesting. I love that. They're bringing an artist into the room that doesn't have the, um, we'll, we'll say it's sort of the musical vocabulary to be able to write these mm. hits, basically, is what they were. Hits, another word. Anyway, we'll get there. Um, but anyway, I, I was intrigued by it. I really was. So during this period of time, now I'm sort of stepped back and I'm still asked, producers are still saying, will you write? And I'm, no. No, I'm taking some time off now. I'm still writing for me, but I'm taking time off. So then um, I had an opportunity. Now my daughter's a little older, a little older. And I took a little more time off than I thought. It was like, I'm going to shelve it for a bit. Yeah. So then I had the um, opportunity to step into this songwriting challenge it was. And I had to write six songs in six weeks. I bet you I could do that. So I stepped into that. And I, I it seriously it was like a switch went back on in my head. And I wrote those songs, no problem, to the point when I remember driving in the car to the studio one day to record one. And I remember saying to myself out loud in the car, where did you go? Because I was so back into my skin as a songwriter again, because, you know, my daughter was all good. She was doing her ballet and all that was good. And, 
And so through that, now I wanted to write. This is all I wanted to do. I wanted to write and just keep going. And what happened was um, I had met another writer through this, this songwriting challenge I'd done. And we'd written a song together. It was really good. And I said to him, hey, he was in Ottawa. I said, you know, do you want to come to Toronto? Because I've got these producers who would like me to write with these people. And now I think I'd like to do it. And there's this thing that it's amazing what you, what you pick up in your life and how you just, you're very, I find as a writer, and, and I'm sure Rochelle feels the same way, that you're very observant. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm a live wire going through life. Mm -hmm. It's like, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, and I'm always writing stuff down. Yeah. But anyway, what I was going to say is, so then that was me now moving into writing with other people. And that's where I spend a good, hmm. I would say 80% of my time now. I'm writing with other artists for their albums or their projects or whatever. And I write everything. I write singer-songwriter. I write heavy metal. I write punk. I, it's amazing. What I, it's, it's kind of cool when I look back at this stuff because I'm really a chameleon in all of these songs. So they don't all sound like me. They sound like whoever's sitting in front of me. That's what people say. What do you sound like? I find it. Wow. I find that absolutely amazing that... Um, yeah, real cool, <laughs> real cool. I love the variety that you have there. Um, but the other thing that's really different with you two is you both challenge yourself. You both, you know, most songwriters we hear, um, they say, well, you know, I get inspired and, you know, like a, a song comes or, and then, or I'm thinking about something and I just have to, oh, just write this down or whatever. But it sounds to me like you, you've had both, you've had a bit of both words, both extremes. You have the inspiration that comes but you also have the okay this is what we're going to do and we're going to do it now so when you have those challenges when you place that challenge on you what steps do you take in order to to fulfill that challenge if you're saying today i'm going to write a fast song or today we're going to write six songs for a particular event what steps do you take to to actually make that happen hmm. Uh, let me just say first that what you just said, Rosanna, about what you do now, like writing for other artists in all different styles, that is like my dream of what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would love one day to do what, that, what you're doing. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm kind of more in that phase of my career where I yeah. write for myself. But, but yeah, sometimes I have ideas and I'm like, oh, this is not for me. Like, but it's exactly. Yeah, I was like so a schizophrenic writer. I mean, I wrote, you could hear that I'm three or four different styles when I write. Yeah. So it's an interesting thing, but I do love that person in the room that, you know, it's it's their heart and soul in the song, and I'm falling into the with them, and I'm following, and I'm going, well, that's not normally what I would do, but that's kind of interesting, so let's go with that. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's a very interesting process. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to actually answer your question, Cheryl, about, um, yeah, if I have something that's more like an assignment that isn't just like, now I feel inspired to do this. Uh, actually, um, one example that might be good uh, for our, our audience here is uh, a couple of times I've written something specifically uh, as a corporate worship song for our church for a series that my pastor is planning. Like in six months, we're going to do a fall series, and it's going to be about this. And he gives me, you know, the study book and the verses, and I have, like, three months to write something. And um, it's really, yeah, it's really fun, but it is very different than just kind of going with what you're inspired by. So um, I guess it makes sense if I first just kind of, I'll explain kind of my, my process in a, in a very succinct way. I, I think of it mostly in these two phases. The first phase is what you might call like the creation or experimentation phase. And in this phase, you know, there aren't any wrong answers. Everything is just kind of exploring possibilities. And I really try to, I don't do any evaluating or judging or saying, this is a good idea and this is not a good idea. In that phase, I just, everything is good. And you just explore possibilities musically, lyrically. Um, and then the second phase is more like a, an evaluation stage where my brain goes more into the other side of looking at those ideas and saying, oh, is that even a coherent idea? Like, or do these ideas flow in a way that builds upon each other? Or do I actually, like what I've written here as the first verse should really be a second verse and I need to start somewhere else. Um, so I do a lot of that more analytical thinking 
And that is the point too, where I might use other tools like a thesaurus or a rhyming dictionary or, you know, whatever tools like that. But in that creation stage, uh, the first one, I try to really just use pen and paper. I find that once I start being on my computer and there's all these other like things coming at you, like, you know, even going onto the thesaurus, you'll see an ad and then like my brain will go somewhere else. So I really try to separate those two things because my brain can't judge and create at the same time. Um, but going between those phases, I might like, at certain points and in, in my writing, it might be like, I'm doing five minutes of this and five minutes of this and back and forth. Or it might be like three hours of this and two hours of this. It really depends on where the song is. Um, but when I'm doing something that is like a, an assignment, like a goal, I'm going to write a song about this. What I do before either of those things is like a research stage where I will, I sound, I'm, I'm a real geek and I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I, if it's if it's like a sermon series, I'll take that Bible verse and I'll write it up top and then I'll think of other, look up other Bible verses that relate to that idea or stories in the Bible or other phrases that come up. Um, for instance, I wrote one, um, the, the series was about the treasure principle, which is based on Matthew 6, the verse that says, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So I wrote a bunch of other verses that relate to that and quotes, like the quote um, from, ooh, I think it's Jim Elliott, yes. Um, He's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And that quote actually became a significant part of the lyric for the chorus, kind of woven in with other verses from scripture and other ideas. So because I had done all this research beforehand and gone to the thesaurus and found 20 words that are synonyms with treasure and other words like verbs that go with treasure, like hoarding and storing and giving and spending. I had this whole, you know, thing that I could look at as I was doing my other two phases, creating and evaluating. I would keep going back to this and being like, oh, I need a, a better verb or I need another image for this. And I would already have done all those things. So I don't have to break my brain out of that creative process okay. to find all these ideas. Okay. Uh, so that's what I do. Do you do mind yeah. mapping? I do, yes. Okay. So, it, and do you want to explain what that is for people? Sure, uh, yeah. Well, to me, maybe it's slightly different for you, but okay. uh, I actually can't. Yeah, this was one of my uh, exercises that I was going to do anyway. So I love to draw these things out. So let's say that the idea was like treasure, right? I would do this in my notebook. Yeah, and that's so cool. And there it would be like the main idea for the song. And then I'll just write out all sorts of other ideas that go with that. Like, you know, whatever the first word is that comes to your head, yeah. gold or hoarding or, you know, spending and riches and wealth. And you just write all these other ideas or phrases Bye. and concepts that come to you. Oh, I realize this is backwards when it's up here, but <laughs> you know, and then you just go from there and you grow this web of ideas and it gives you so much ammunition for your songwriting. Is that kind of what you do? Yeah, well, uh, you know what? I don't do it as much anymore, but it's, it's a really valuable tool because yeah. it is, it is, it's distilling all the information it's definitely taking all the pieces and it's letting your mind just roll as opposed to sitting there critiquing every word. You just let it go. Just let it go and write down stuff that comes to you, whether you're writing it down or singing it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the advocate for recording what you're playing too, because you just, what, what I say? <laughs> it's, yeah. Just, even on your phone, just record it and just let it go. It's a difficult thing to do. I, I work with the person who he, he's a master at the flow and he'll just ramble. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, I, I don't, I, cause I do kind of live in both brains at the same time sometimes, which is a challenge. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So the flow is good. Should I jump in with what I do? Yeah, yeah look, absolutely. <laughs> what I do. Okay. It's different because it depends on what I'm writing for and who I'm writing with. I'm a big believer of you need to write what you feel. You need to know, you need to write what you know, and you can know it by learning about it, by researching it, and all of that. Um, what I do, though, is I, I have a tendency to write down a lot of lines. I do, I, I, and what I call landing lines. So when I'm writing, sometimes I write, and I call it writing, I write, I'm kind of writing backwards at times, because I've got this line, and I know that's where I want to land. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, I'm going there. And then I go, okay, now, how is it smart to go to that line? So when I'm walking around in everyday life, I'm constantly taking, I'm constantly writing stuff down. And what I would do then is, uh, it used to be I would just write down the line and go, well, that's a good line. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that someday. <laughs> I got a lot of lines. So I'd write it down, but I wouldn't write down the context of the line. So then I'd look at that line a month later and go, what's that? What was I thinking? So now I suggest to people, if you write things down, write down what you were feeling, what you were seeing, what you were hearing, so that you can pull yourself back into that moment. Hmm and go, oh yeah, well, of course that guy was doing that. Oh, well that makes sense. And then it's kind of like, it's kind of witty or it's, it's a smart line. Like you have to have, when you're writing songs, I think it depends on the purpose of the song. If you're just writing songs for yourself and you have something you need to communicate, it's very cathartic songwriting. Like when I have challenges, I write songs. Wow. more so than when I feel good. I, you know, I'm sure every songwriter would go, they're quick into the woe. <laughs> and, and so you have to tell yourself sometimes, I'm going to write a happy song today. I'm going to write something up. I mean, it, it, whether it's up-tempo or up in feeling, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's motivating up. Yeah. Um, so anyway, with these lines, with my landing lines, is I will, I will write to that line. Uh, so that's how I write when I'm writing just for myself. Now, when I'm, and, and as I said, I go a lot on feel. I do go a lot on feel and what intuitively feels right. I also am a writer that I am very photography based. I do a lot of photography as well. And to me, a photograph is the same as a song. It captures a moment. And wow, there's so many things to cover off the song. Written, but it, it, a lot of times it's the simplicity of being able to pull somebody into your song. It means something to you but it needs to communicate to somebody. You, you, need to, you need to be sharing things that, I mean, you don't need to, but if you want to share with people, you want something that resonates with them. So with, with um, writing for myself, it's one type of process, but when I'm writing with other people, it really starts out as a conversation. I mean, people will come in and say, what are we gonna do? We're probably gonna talk for two hours. So that I learn about you. I need to know about you. It's like, you can't just walk and say, well, let's read the hit. I mean, what is that? What is it? You know, if, if all the stars align and people like what you write, what you do, what you sing, what you say, perfect. If you're trying to write something because you think that's what people want to hear, no, it's not yours. You need to write something that's yours. That's really, really important. So that, you know, as a singer, we all know as singers, you're going to sing that song a lot of times and people are going to ask you about it. You have to own it and believe it. Otherwise you're like, it's karaoke. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, I love this. This is great, great information. The whole landing lines, I, I mean, I use yeah. that technique as well. It's fabulous. Um, uh, when we're talking about songwriting, um, we wanted to get into storytelling a little bit, if we could, um, because um, one of the concepts of storytelling that was utilized, I think it was uh, um, uh, Drew Brown and I were having a conversation a while ago, and uh, uh, we were talking about the concept of past, present, and future. And you have your concept for the three different time uh, variances you can write in, which helps you to develop the song. Anyway, so what techniques would you utilize like for a story song? For me? Uh, yeah. Okay. What I do, this is another thing I do, is when I'm writing, whether I'm writing by myself or I'm writing with somebody else, is I literally put myself in the video. So that when I'm sitting there, I'm actually writing about what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, and what I'm feeling. So that I, somebody else who's listening to it can totally see what I'm talking about. So I could be describing what the wall looks like in the room and that the curtains are waving in the wind. Mm -hmm. So you are in that, there's no disputing you being in that moment of the story. Um, I guess also I've learned so that's, that's key because I'll I, and when I'm writing with other people I'll say shut your eyes and let's walk through the video this is what I'm doing what are you doing um, which is which is a huge asset when you're writing I think because you're really in that moment yeah I'll, and I'll leave it at that Rochelle I'll let you go over some thoughts oh yeah I think it's it's very similar uh, when you said that a song is like a photograph I was I was like yeah that's exactly it I think 
the power of a song is in the fact that it captures this one moment, like even though it does have a past, present, and a future, yeah. the song, the power of the song isn't really in saying like, all these things happened. The power of the song is in saying one thing really, really well. And in such a way that you feel like, yeah, you, you are there. You could taste and smell and touch the things that are in that photograph or in that song. So yeah, I would agree. Like a lot of it is sensory based. Mm -hmm. um, actually this, uh, this book right here is called Songwriting Without Boundaries <laughs> by Pat Addison. <laughs> and this, uh, this taught me so much about, um, he calls it sense bound writing, but it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of writing challenges and it really starts with challenging you to write um, from the five senses mm -hmm. and to take, you know, a prompt and write as much as you can in terms of all the, all the senses, all the colors and shapes and sounds and textures um, that you would feel with this, this one idea. And once you develop that skill, it is so powerful in songwriting to be able to say that one sentence. Um, actually, Roseanne, in that song that you shared, I don't know if we're going to play it, um, look up, there's that line, I think it's in the third verse, about the black umbrellas in the rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I was like, yes, this is magic. Because it's so much more powerful to say black umbrellas in the rain than to say it was his funeral. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But black umbrellas in the rain gives me that picture, and I know it's a funeral. I know I can feel the clouds and the sadness and everyone wearing black, like all of that information comes without actually being said. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best things about lyric writing is when you say something without actually saying it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one as of the- as, not, as long as it's not too cryptic. Because yes. some people yeah. get so, and I call it heady, then when yes. you're writing and it's really heady, that people are going, huh? Yeah, like you're like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes people think too hard. It's yeah. like you want to pull them in without having them to think too hard, right? Yeah, exactly. It's that fine balance of giving and just enough information, yeah, but not yeah, not leaving them in the dark either. Right. Before we go on, I just want to remind those who are joining in now. We are on the gospel and music industry hub right now. We're live. We've got Rochelle Luke. We've got um, Roseanne. Um, <laughs> Roseanne, but Roseanne Baker Thornley. Know, it's a handle, eh? It's RBT. <laughs> RBT is fine as well. <laughs> it's faster. Yeah, I, I just want to remind everybody that, that you know we, we're, we're on streaming now, and we're going through some songwriting techniques with these two amazing artists. And I'm I'm just I'm I'm smiling and enjoying the conversation so much. I'm so, so glad you guys are on board. Um, so if you're listening in, don't forget, you can also uh, chat um, questions in, if you like. And as we continue to talk, um, thank you so much. This will be restreaming on, uh, on, our, um, on our YouTube, uh, GM My Hub TV. So make sure you check that out uh, later on after we will uh, be finishing and editing and posting. So it'll be all good for you to have that to resource later. So uh, as we continue, let's talk about uh, continuing with the, um, the same thing about uh, when you're writing a song, uh, getting to the, the place where it's not just something that you're, um, you're writing, but something you're feeling as a part of, part of your personality. And, your, and that's when you were saying earlier on about writing with another person, you get to find who are they and what are they, what are they all about and their perspective that helps write the music. It helps to develop the song. Well, I was going to say with Look Up, for instance, um, that was written with a writer I write with quite a bit and we write with other artists together. But we've written quite a few songs. Like that particular song is a song we wrote. Um, so here's an example. Here's an example of how that song came about. Um, so it's called Look Up. And when my daughter was in uh, New York City, she went to, uh, she was dancing down there and uh, doing ballet down there. And she, at times she would just, she'd be kind of lonely because she was in her res at night. And she was quite, you know, pretty quiet and was not out partying every night, apparently. <laughs> but um, she, would, she would say to me, oh, I'm not going to go out tonight. It's pretty quiet. And, you know, I'm just going to stay home. And I'm kind of missing home. And so I said to her, I used to say to her, you know what, go to the window and open it up. The window and look out at the moon 
And I'd say, we're looking at the same moon right now. So there was a connection in it, right? There was a connection in that we were both looking at the same moon. So I wrote that song with North, Northeastern, and we start with, that's why I told about the story. So then we took that story, instead of making it literal to me, we wanted to make more of a story out of it. It's probably leaning more towards almost a country song, isn't it, um, yeah. Rochelle? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm singing it and North singing it as well. So we turned it around to be a song about a father and his daughter and the fact that she's leaving home. And, and he keeps saying to her, you know what? Don't, he's, you know, he's, he's tearful on the way to the train. She's never really seen him be tearful, and, but he's dropping her off at the train to go away. So he says, just look up, look up, look at that moon. And we'll both be looking at that same moon. So the story evolves to be now she has a daughter and it's about her life. It goes by fast. Like you have to be careful in a song because man, it's, you got three minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want you writing something that's 18 verses and I don't think you're going to keep your listener that long. Yeah. Um, so we had to move fast, but we moved fast through she grew up and this happened. And I even sing it a little differently. The first voice, I sing it very soft. It's very childlike almost. And then I'm a little more, I'm in my teenage years and moving and going on, getting onto the train and going away. And my dad, I'm saying goodbye, you know, as a child. And then that's where the black umbrella's in the ring. So you understand something happened in here. So he's gone. But now she's holding her daughter's hand at the funeral. And she says to him, or she, sorry, she says to her daughter, look up. He's always with us. So that's, that's how that story sort of evolved. And, and it didn't take us that long to write it. I mean, we're both writing all the time, but we've written a lot together. But I think that was one of the first songs we would have written together. I remember writing it with them. And um, actually, that was his line, the black umbrellas in the rain. That was his expressive line in there, which was great. So it was really a collaboration back and forth, trying to figure out the music a little bit in between. He's very melody driven as well. So we were always sort of working with the music. I don't always do that. Sometimes I just write lyric and, and I don't need to have the music. I just want to get the mood of the lyric. So anyway, that's how Look Up was written. So if there's an opportunity to maybe post that or go, you know, whatever, that would be an example. And the lyrics are all there right underneath the, uh, right under the back. So. Anyway, that's just an example of how that was written. Very visual, though. We were in our heads, and we'd have our eyes shut, and I'd say, what do you see? I'm about the train. Hey, what are you feeling? So, so important. Like, you got to be in it. A song's not just this distant thing that you just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to write about that. I mean, I guess. But I'm sure there's, there's all different ways to write songs. I'm, that's not me. It could be some people, and it may work very well for them. But the way I write is, I feel it. I definitely feel it. And that's what makes songs most effective, I find. Um, I think you said earlier, you have to believe the song. The song, um, and I used to say this, even when I sing a song, if I haven't even written it, but I'm singing that, uh, singing a song, something, something like that, I have to let that song be a part of me, for sure. uh, in order for me to communicate it even more effectively. Um, it's almost like if you wrote the story, I'm telling the story, but I have to tell it as a, as if I'm in your shoes at this point, right? <laughs> And, and that's like when you're co-writing with somebody, like, uh, do you know Carlos Morgan? Yes. Okay. Carlos has a song it's called Have a Little Faith. Yeah. <laughs> North and I wrote that with him. Really? So he owns that song. He sings that. That is his trademark song now. And he's so in that song. Like, he was in the room. We wrote it. He was, he was you know, explaining his life to us and the challenges. And we took all that. So you have to be very empathetic as a, as a writer in a room with another artist because it's all about them in there. I mean, I can take my interpretation of it, but it's important that it's him in that song. And that is Have a Little Faith. And Carlos is amazing. He's, he's amazing. We've written another song with him since, uh, a few other songs since. But um, that's just a good example of uh, when you're writing with people in the room, there has to be space for everybody. There shouldn't be any, but there shouldn't be any ego. Number one, and I always say the songwriter disclaimer is, and Rochelle, you'll 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 appreciate this. Is like you want to say the line, but you know it's not good. But you want to get it out because you think this might take somebody else somewhere. But you say this isn't it. But 
I want to get t-shirts that go, this isn't it, but it's a songwriter's disclaimer because you go, oh, this doesn't, it's not a good line. But someone says it and you go, oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's not great. But you know what? It could be. So that's very cool. It's, yeah. Collaboration is a very cool place to be when it's working well. And it usually should work well as long as everybody's invested in it. Yeah. Now, Rochelle, you touched on something a little earlier about arrangement where you say something, a verse might not be good at the, maybe the second, we use that as the second mm -hmm. verse. Um, so when you're talking about writing a song, there is a, is, what, um, what would you say to someone who is trying to figure out that they're stuck and they're writing that song, uh, like you suggested, moving it around. So um, where would you go from somebody who was stuck? Maybe, maybe both of you, mm -hmm. Roseanne as well, you could answer yeah. to that. So um, one thing that I do if I, like when I have those kinds of questions, like is this actually the first verse or the second verse? Like sometimes I write something at the beginning, I think it's the chorus and in the end, it's actually the bridge or something else, right? Um, so I think a lot about the flow of ideas in the song. So if you could think of each part of the song, like the verse and the chorus and the bridge as either like a snapshot, like an image, or sometimes um, if it's not like that kind of a song, then what I'll do is try and sum it up as like a sentence. Um, but the chorus, I think of like, like it's the thesis. It's the main idea that you have to say once, but it's not enough to say it once. You have to say it two or three times because you feel it so much. So you have this chorus, which is your main idea. And I might sometimes just like sum it up in a sentence like, I, you know, I believe in God, maybe, let's say, that's what it is. It expresses that in a much more poetic way, but really all I'm saying is I believe. And then maybe first verse, I could sum that up as uh, the doubts that I'm feeling. And everything, all the ideas in that verse need to build on that, like paint a picture of like, I am feeling some doubts, I have questions. But then I sing the chorus and I do believe after all. And then maybe the second verse is something like reasons why I believe these are the things that I hold on to. These are the promises I hold on to. So I can categorize them together. And that's a stronger song than having verse one be half doubt and half reasons I believe. And verse two being half doubts, more doubts, and half things I believe. Right? It's stronger to say doubts up top, sing the chorus. The second verse is the other side of the story. Oh, but these are the things I really believe. And then I sing the chorus again. And then I think of the bridge as like, the bridge is always like looking at the chorus from another window mm. in the house, right? You see it in a different way. Um, so it might be like telling in this example, it might be like in the bridge, I'm, I'm saying something that happened recently that restored my faith or something like that, right? Something that I haven't said before, but when you really think about it, this is the thing that like you've been waiting for me to say this whole time. Well, it's like a higher level, right? It's a higher level thought. Yeah. And sometimes it can be just one line because I know people get caught up in the middle eight. Oh my God, do we really need eight? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it can just be one line that just, and sometimes it doesn't need a bridge. It exactly. doesn't need a bridge. It, there's, you know what? I think as the more you write songs, you start going, why? I mean, who, who's they? And, and why can't we do it a different way? Like I've been writing lately with some people, um, where we do the first verse, you do the chorus, now we're at the second verse. And I'm going, does it have to follow the first verse exactly? No. We can switch it up a bit. We can switch up the melody a little bit. Like, you can't be crazy. You can't step into another song. But you can switch it up. And I wonder if, especially in this day and age, when everybody's just, you know, you could do a one-minute song and people would be good with that and moving on to the next because everybody's just ADD, <laughs> right? <laughs> so... Um, the thought is with, with my process right now is like, yeah. let's keep people engaged. Why do we have to, why do we have to go back? Let's just keep moving. Let's move the journey of the song forward. We don't need to go backwards. I think that's great. That's a great thing to talk about because we, uh, when we think about songwriting, we think of intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, second chorus, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, you know, and it's like there's a format. But you can break those rules, just as you said. That's absolutely uh, perfect. And uh, but we need the foundation. I do think, as new writers, you need to listen to how songs are written because it's like ballet. I fully believe, because I've spent so much time with my daughter in ballet, it's a great foundation, and then you move from there. But it gives you a strong foundation. Whether you're going to do hip hop or you're going to do tap, whatever, 
it's the foundation. And I do think that young writers who are starting have to at least have a sense of what the foundation is before you can start messing with it. Yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about that in, in, in previous uh, broadcasts. Um, listening to a song that is a hit and taking the and unpacking it and what makes it a hit. And yeah. then you can take that and try to duplicate those patterns. And that helps you as a, a, to learn how to write. So like you said, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with that too, Roseanne. Like, I, I find that often when people are first starting out, they want to make exceptions for everything. Yeah. Um, but it is a good practice to like, at first to just say, I'm just going to learn the rules so that when I break them, I break them on purpose and I know why I'm breaking them. Just right? so you know. I yeah. just think it's good to know where, yeah. a little bit of where it comes from. And I'm all for people. I love people doing things differently. That's why I like to work with singers that everybody's a blend. All of us are a different blend, right? And, and I love when you take, I've sang EDM tracks before, who would have thought? But what they liked about it was you didn't expect my voice on it. So I love when I work with artists when they're taking a genre, but their voice doesn't necessarily fit that genre, but it's cool because it's not expected. And you go, it's a blend. It's a blend for sure. Yeah. That's a very cool thing. I just wanted to go back to that thought, actually, though. Dale, you had asked me about, like, if someone's stuck and they kind of have some of the parts of the song, but they get stuck. Um, so, yeah, with, with that idea of, like, kind of being able to really uh, sum up the ideas of each part of your song, when you do that, you might see that there's actually a gap in the flow of ideas. Like, there's something in that story that hasn't been explained, and you need to actually write that verse and put it in there and maybe take another thing out. Um, or maybe you'll see that actually like the song isn't moving forward, like what you were saying, Roseanne, like nothing's really, and yeah. there's not enough happening. So maybe you'll, it just helps you to kind of see, do I, is there something missing? Is there enough movement? Is there enough development of the ideas? Um, and very often, yeah, like when I'm writing a song, and I'm sure it's probably the same for you, Roseanne, like I'll write so many different variations or oh, versions, yeah. right? Yeah. And so people, when they look at your song when it's finished, they think you just sat down and wrote it, but you probably wrote 18 verses yeah. or versions of them that are not in the song. And I think when people get stuck, they, they're, af like, they're afraid to try to make that many mistakes, yeah. almost. Well, um, no, I think yeah. people sometimes when they write, they're writing it to be finished. So they're going, verse yeah. one, exactly. chorus, verse two, yeah, like this. So, and I'm sure what I do, because I work primarily on computer these days, I actually find I think better with my fingers than my, I can't even read my own writing anymore. So uh, what I do is even if I'm getting rid of lines, I move them down, move them down. I don't throw them away because yeah. I might go back and think I might want it. So I've got, I'll have documents that are 10 pages long, but I have the song at the beginning of it. There's the song, but there's all the stuff that's underneath. I call them lost lines. And the lost lines go underneath and and i keep them all because you never know and, and it's just it's creative jamming in your own head that's all it is i'm exactly the same i have exactly the same thing when i write on my computer it looks like that when i write in my notebook again like i never erase or scratch out anything i just have all this stuff and then i take like two of those best lines and i move them to the next page and i keep oh, going relevant, right i mean you know when you're writing a song i think it's important to know that there's no there's no hurry yeah. You don't have to write it. I've got songs I start and I finish a year later. Yeah. Um, Three, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or this chorus, and that's as far as it goes. That's where co-writing comes in handy, because I'm sure everybody has a bunch of verses and a chorus, and you go, I don't know where I'm going now. That's where another person's sort of thinking on it comes in handy. But I also think sometimes when you're writing and you're struggling, and it's just like you're going, I can't find my bridge. Mm -hmm. Walk away from it for a second and just let it mull in your head. Because it'll sneak up on you. Sometimes it's like, of course, there it is. Now that I've walked away, it's right in front of me. <laughs> it's a bizarre yeah. Um, oh, man. If people at home, that is a nugget of um, amazing thing to learn, uh, to walk away from a song, come back to it later. Really good. Roseanne Baker Thornley, and we have Rochelle Luke, and we are just unpacking some songwriting for those of you who are just joining in. Um, wow, we were just talking about um, songwriting and um, amazing things happening on the show tonight. And uh, let's get talking again. And we're talking about taking a break from the song when you come back with a fresh perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I just, as I was saying, I mean, there's all different, there's no one way to write a song. Yeah. Sometimes you're inspired and you write a song. Sometimes you have a line and you want to, you go, hmm, what could I do with that? 
Um, I mean, I'm in a situation with writing with people where, for the most part, I mean, we're hoping to write something, but there's never any pressure to finish it in that session. I'm going, like, do, do we have to have it done in three hours? No, no. If we come up with a great idea, I'm all about the quality. It's more important to me that you have a great idea than just throwing whatever together and going, oh, we wrote a song. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> What's the song about? Does it mean anything to anybody? D do you like it? I mean, that's the, all those things are so important. And, and that's where it has to be meaningful. It really, I mean, there's all different types of songs out there that have all different purposes. Um, but when I'm writing with people or writing by myself, I, I can journal my life through my songs. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what was happening in my life. Yeah. It's interesting. We're that's getting cool. some questions from our audience, actually. Oh, cool. So um, one is one question that popped up is um, how do you overcome like okay they're using the term perfectionism and I'm not quite sure uh, if there's a pre question related to that but I guess I guess because you have the process you you have a way of sorting what works and what doesn't work within a song. So how do you, how do you, do you ever feel you're crossing that bridge to a perfectionism? And if so, how do you overcome that? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting because actually, as you were just talking, Roseanne, I was going to pipe in with something about perfectionism. Uh, when you were saying like, oh yeah, we don't have to finish it today. It's, it's better for it to be great. Um, and I, I, I totally agree with that. But then there's this other side of me because I am such a perfectionist that if I, put that pressure on myself for every song that I write to be great, I'll never write anything. Um, and I think there are people out there like that. You kind of have to know yourself. Some people are more on the end where they need to be like, we need to be like, hey, have some higher standards, right? Like write something really high quality. And then some other people are so hard on themselves. Uh, like what I was saying about like your brain can't create and judge at the same time. And once I realized that, I was like, oh, I was always trying to judge while I was writing and it was always cutting myself off before I could really get anywhere creatively. So as a perfectionist, uh, which by the way, I, I don't see as a strength necessarily. There are some things about it that you keep and some things about it that you have to say, I'm not gonna let this you know, stop me from writing and finishing things and releasing them and sharing them. Because for me, I know that, like, and this happens with recording too, um, if I wait until I finish a perfect song and every, it's perfect in songwriting, it's perfect in arrangement and recording and every take that I did was great. If I aim for that, I will never release any music out into the world ever. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, to be perfectly honest, for several years, I was totally stuck. I didn't release music for five years after my first project. And you know, that was a big part of that. So I do also want to make sure that, you know, for, for everyone who's listening out there, like there is that balance, like we're still human and it's the human element of music that we love. We don't want music made by robots. We want music made by humans. Um, so there's that balance of like, you want to push yourself to do something better. A lot of times I'll write something and then, yeah, I'll walk away from it maybe for a week or two, or even years later, I'll come back to it and I'll say, oh, I think I can do that a little bit better. So I will, I'll do it a little bit better. And you know, there is that, there's a healthiness to, to doing things better and retrying them, but there's also a healthy place where you have to stop and say, you know what, I'm proud of what I did, and I think it's ready to be shared or to move on to the next stage and to be recorded. So you have to, you have to watch yourself on that and, and surround yourself with other people. I think it's good to share your art with people who are close to you, who you trust, who are safe, um, who can help you kind of gauge that they, they know you well enough to know if this is really your best work or if you know you can push yourself a little more so i think those are important things to remember well i think you're your own judge of great number one to some degree because when you're writing a song you know when it feels finished mm -hmm. because you could literally write something forever yes but there's always a point where you go i'm pretty good with this now I, you know, this is resolved enough for me that you, you, I don't think you should walk, I mean, you can, I mean, you can just keep writing, but if you've got a great, if you've got a great idea that I do think sometimes people are so hungry to just have something, they settle, they just go, oh, it's good enough. 
it's good enough, good enough, good enough. I mean, if you already are telling yourself that it could be better, why not spend the time just looking at it and maybe sharing with somebody, but even just with yourself of going, how could that be better? Um, a good example is, a good example is I wrote a song um, called Strong. And um, let's see if I can remember this though. I wrote it from the perspective of being angry with somebody. And it was, my landing line is, how can anybody be that strong? Now, my landing line came from the position of, how can you be like that? How can you be that strong that you can just walk away? So I really like my landing line. And I wrote the song and I was finished. I was finished. But I'm going, you know, I bet you could be better. I bet you, it's kind of a good line that I've not really used to. It's the optimum, you know? And I was just driving along the street and I was thinking about, it. I was out driving around, I walked away from it, it was done. I had recorded it at home and I was like, okay, this is done. I'm probably gonna put it on my album, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was just second guessing yourself a little bit and thinking about it and going, it's, it's good, how could it be better? Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about somebody else and I thought, man, he's in a bad, I wonder how he's doing. He's been in a bad place for a while. I wonder if he got through it. You know, he has to be so strong. Ah. I switched it up and all of a sudden it was like how do you be that strong when, when it's so difficult mm -hmm. way better yeah and it was just stepping back from it and going yeah it's it good it was good enough it was very good enough it was good enough and but it in my mind it wasn't resolved so I think you have to be your own gate a little bit and not just write everything and just go wow that's just amazing okay step back now and then look at it yeah that's so true I, I do feel like there's like a it's like an appetite like when i'm writing a song after a certain time you just feel like you know it's done like the song exactly. tells you it's done exactly um, but it is important i think because you don't know when that happens like for some songs it takes you know years before it gets to the point where it's done sometimes it's three days and you're you're done but i do also try to to give myself let's say um, yeah, like, especially if you are a perfectionist or someone who isn't tends, doesn't tend to be happy with what you've done. Uh, some days, if I'm really struggling with that, I'll just say to myself, you know what, Michelle, today success is that you sat down and wrote for two hours Definitely. and you were fully present there. Yeah. And even if at the end of that two hours, like the song isn't done, yeah. that's cool. That's okay. I showed up and I was there. And yeah. then if I keep on doing that, then I know the song is going to be done. Like working a muscle right to some degree i mean you you know people say what do you do when you're not inspired you know what you just sit down and make yourself inspired sometimes <laughs> because you want to write it's a good it's a good exercise to be able to have and and the more you get into it you will find some inspiration in it for sure but it's it is it's not easy work songwriting is not easy work i sit in rooms with people for six hours and I've got great songwriting stamina. I know that because I just keep going. But it's it's wearing because your brain is so far into it. You're just like, oh, okay, there's the second verse. What are we gonna do for the bridge? It's you know, <laughs> it's an interesting, it's an interesting job. It's very funny though, Rochelle. You'll know this from sitting in a room. Sometimes people say nothing. You sit there and you look at each other for a half an hour looking for the line. <laughs> Like, if you're just going to find it floating in the air. Yeah. It'll come to me eventually. Just, <laughs> yeah. wait. And then, just and wait for it. Like, when I'm working with, for instance, with North, and I'll, I'll say something, no. And then he'll say something, no. And you just, yeah. But when well, you find we, were talk we were talking with Jacob Moon just uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he brought up an interesting thing about so songs are usually found, not discovered, not created. And it's it's a, a thought process that he uses, and some other artists would, would would agree with that. That finding the essence of the song is not always a lot of cerebral stuff, but more of just waiting for the words to come out when you're singing. Like for instance, most of the styles that we found it as melody comes first, and as you're la 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 la, la you start to put the words together, find your your landing lines, and 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 you build the song. Like, what, would that be a common for you guys? You know why? As because well. you're playing something. I've sat in here and played something on guitar, and it just takes me into a moment, and you're inspired. And you, the words come to you. Whatever the feeling is just rises up, and mm -hmm. you start writing about whatever it is. Or, 
you know, I wrote a song about, um, oh man, I remember sitting there for hours. I had to write something. It was not coming to me. I kept throwing stuff out going, that's crap. And then all of a sudden, I, I talk about this. I wrote about this woman named Jezebel. It's called One Last Kiss Jezebel. And she literally, in my brain, walked into my brain. And there she was, and I started writing about her. But that was four hours later of writing. But I just kept playing. And it was just like, I found, found her. So yes, I agree, it's found. But that's why it's so important when you're working with people to talk to them. Because it's all in the conversation. I'm sitting there and I'm talking to people. I take notes. And, and I remember writing something with an artist um, from out west. She was a country artist. And before she came to Toronto, I met her. Uh, we talked on Skype. And she was telling me about, um, she was a country singer. And her husband's a cowboy. And she said, I was on the road. And it was a real challenge with some of the people on the road. They didn't respect my, you know, my husband, who was a cowboy. And they said things you shouldn't say. Oh, OK. So she's telling me all this stuff. So when she came to Toronto, she said, so what are we going to write about? And I said, well, I've got an idea. And she said, what's that? You don't say that to a cowboy. Said, oh, <laughs> I love Where'd it. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I said, it was in the conversation. It's all in the conversation. Everything is in the conversation somewhere. Yeah. That's why you have to be, you just got to be in the moment and find stuff that is interesting. It's a good song. Don't say that to a cowboy. <laughs> don't touch his hat. That's another thing we don't do. You don't touch a cowboy's hat. I learned that, I learned that from her. So, Wow. Um, for, we have a few minutes left. For those of you who are tuning in, yes, we are speaking with Rochelle Luke and Roseanne Baker Thornley, um, who are sharing their tidbits, not more than tidbits, more like, like golden nuggets on what they do and their techniques that they use to, to write songs specifically with the songwriting and capturing ideas and and kind of capturing making songs like a picture um it's where we're having a, a wonderful time here um i have another question though for you ladies that has come from the audience and it has to do with phrases um if you have two equally strong phrases for a song how do you break the tie how do you know which phrase is the better phrase to put within a song? I think that gets back to looking at what your song is about and what you want it to say. Mm. Um, Cause there's different ways to say things. I think, yeah, Rochelle, it's a, it's a tough one, right? It's, that's that 10 pages underneath that sit underneath your song. It's, it's distilling the information and thinking, well, that's interesting. That's mm -hmm. a new line. That's a new way of saying that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it is really hard to break the tie. Uh, if they are really quite evenly matched in terms of the strength of the idea and the image, mm -hmm. then I might um, really go with actually how it feels to sing them, like how- That's important too syllables, how the consonants and vowel sounds just feel to sing. Sometimes some words just feel better when you sing them. Um, another thing I might weigh in is like um, the, how do I explain this? Some words are strong and some words are weak. For example, a verb is stronger than a preposition, on or of. Um, so sometimes, uh, like if you just look at the word on the page, they look equally strong, but when you sing them, um, if the strong word is on a strong note in the melody, then that is actually a stronger lyric. If you sing the same line, um, but the strongest note of the melody actually is on the preposition or like some sort of word that doesn't have as much meaning, then it's not as strong, uh, depending on like how, you know, how the phrase goes and the, the way that the syllables match up with the notes. So sometimes I uh, break the tie that way. Well, I think you have to think of your voice as an instrument for sure. And it's a rhythmic instrument sometimes. It's all the syncopated rhythm of what you're singing on top of the melody. So that's really important and it's right. There are some words that just sing better than other words. Yeah, I don't even know how, I don't even know how to explain that. It's, it's only because you do it for so long that you just go, even when somebody else is singing it for you, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, that sounds good or that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, I'd like to continue on with this conversation, but you know, we are running out of time. <laughs> I could keep going. And, and we got to have these ladies back, Cheryl. I would love to it's, have them back. I would oh, love to have another session with you ladies. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I am just loving this. This is, this is phenomenal. You, you ladies are a wealth of information. Um, uh, Roseanne, Rochelle, I just, I love the fact that you made yourself available to do this. And, and believe me, there's a lot of people out there are going to be blessed from the words you said. Uh, phenomenal. Just enjoying our time together. Before we go, is there one little thing that if you were to say to somebody that, that you wanted to say today, and you just, oh, you know what? I should do this. Uh, maybe go ahead. Say something. Hey. Just keep running. Just keep, yes. It's all a learning process. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just learn and listen and, and do things like this, I guess. I mean, that definitely is helpful. Talk to people. Get other people's opinions. I mean, that's challenging sometimes, but and get people that are not just going to say, that's great. You want people that actually give you an honest opinion on it. <laughs> you want people to, like other songwriters or, or musicians or whoever, not just dad. So I think that's important too. My mommy said I'm a good singer. <laughs> True, right? Yeah, yeah. I would say too that like because we are people of faith, we have something that other people don't have as well as artists. Um, we believe, yeah, I believe that my creativity is really just God's creativity pouring into me. So remember that he is with you. Remember that the spirit creates through you and yes you need to work on your craft you need to do exercises and you know all those things that you need to do to build your craft um those are so important i think sometimes as christian artists some people can lean too much and say oh yeah god's just gonna give me something i don't have to work for it you do you have to work and you have to partner with the spirit in developing the gifts that he's given to you um but at the same time as you work remember that god is creating with you and just you just have to remain open to that and trust that. And it's a really beautiful kind of work when you see it that way. Just enjoy it. Enjoy Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rochelle and Roseanne, your time with us has been invaluable. Thank you so much. Uh, also, just remember, we're going to be posting this on our YouTube channel, GMI Hub TV. You want to check that out go there and subscribe and follow that and that will help us to get more content on there really appreciate that thank you so thank much you. cheryl do you want to wrap it up i'm just gonna say i was gonna thank thank again uh thank you ladies for joining us and thank you viewers for for joining us as well there there's a, a slew of questions that have been coming but we did run out of time um maybe ladies i can forward some of those questions to you and i will and once i get your responses i'll send it to our 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 viewers um it's amazing what's coming in <laughs> but we want to thank everyone for joining us uh again on the hub streaming live live online here um we are going to do this again uh in the coming weeks um getting more songwriters getting and touching more on things like the business how to sell your music we're going to talk a little bit more about the studio side, the, the production side. So just stay tuned. Um, check our Facebook, check our, our YouTube, and uh, we'll make sure we and check our website, of course, which is gospelmusicindustryhub.com, where we will post more information about what's upcoming. So for now, I say thank you, God bless, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>